So what did you say? Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking when uh, the Amazon will release a service, managed service, to replace the camera crew, like you, you just rented from AWS and you They can maybe about. remove both of us, just from the interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just, just machine learning, AI, talking to each other, making interviews, and then they, they uh, hire a fleet of uh, AI which uh, watches those videos, likes them, you know, generates traffic and... Then, then that's so amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazon can compete with like Azure and Google to compete whose whose bots are going to be more active. I would just say that it's Amazon amazing. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah, that, that's great. So tell us about the event, uh, Milan. Uh, what is this all about? Is the, what kind of event is uh, Awesome Day? Yeah, Awesome Day is an uh, extremely important event uh, for the community, for the local community. Um, it's organized by uh, AWS uh, and uh, it just shows that uh, they recognize the presence of uh, users in this region. And uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's extremely important for the, for the local community. It's a one-day event uh, and uh, it's filled with talks from people who work at Amazon. Uh, that's slightly different from conferences and uh, other uh, maybe community-driven events where uh, people from uh, different companies come to speak. But here are people from AWS and AWS partners uh, and that's... Uh, that's very uh, important because you can actually see those people around us. You can go and talk to them directly and maybe get some insight or get some help. Do you think that they're like a superhumans? These guys that work at AWS, is there anything special about them? Can I, we achieve that level? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at least we have these t-shirts. Yeah, so that, yeah that, exactly. That's so, a, just half of the job? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So this event is uh, like half uh, business, half uh, develop for developers. Yeah. So it's it's not the high level technical, yeah. just introduction, uh, just for the introduction for to, to, to get into the AWS. So uh, so uh, what which part of the, of the day do you do you prefer this uh, morning business or? I'm developer all for, after yeah, afternoon. I'm, I'm all for the afternoon talks. Uh, I, I'm looking forward for Nemanja's uh, talk. I think that's okay. going to be amazing. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm more okay. in that. Uh, yeah. we, we, we've been together to Nemanja's talk. Uh, he's uh, he's smart guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, really is. So, uh, so uh, I really enjoy that. This is, he has some kind of a technical uh, level uh, knowledge that is like uh, uh, from old ages. You know, like uh, you have. He knows about transactions, databases, real databases, not just no, no SQL stuff. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So he can, he can uh, actually help someone migrate some dinosaurs to, to AWS. But in, in uh, which uh, most of the uh, of our community, uh, uh, if, if we speak about uh, local market, most most of the people are still working in these di dinosaur technologies, and uh, they really need help. We need help, yeah. so uh, it's not easy to just jump into new, new stuff. So uh, you, you went to this uh, Nemanja talk in uh, Novi Sad. Yeah. So it, it was a great uh, talk. Uh, how to scale from zero to to really? Uh, but is it, is scaling really that important? Uh, it depends on the business and the industry where you're working at. So scaling m might be your vital vital feature or is it just the, the the knowledge you get in that in that journey to to, to get to some higher level yes so uh, i think that the, the nemanja's talk in oisad was uh, very uh, informative because it showed people that how you can actually uh, achieve this uh, uh, sort of uh, failovers and um, that, that that's not necessarily scalability that's just uh, like having a resilient system and uh, sometimes with your own infrastructure, with your own data centers, that's uh, hard to achieve. And uh, what Amazon provides you is a practically solution to make your, uh, your application or your system uh, resilient to any kind of failure. Uh, there's, there are multiple regions, so you can, you know, if, if earthquake hits Frankfurt, you still have Ireland or, yes. or you know, yes. Stockholm yes. or, or whatever. So should, do you think so. we should call Nemanja now and uh, ask him some questions? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. So let's call Nemanja.
can you can we can you come here and just talk to us for a second? So this is Nemanja. Yeah. This Hi. this is the guy that we were talking about. He's that dinosaur that we're talking about. <coughs> yes. Yeah. You can, you so, can tell by the hair. Yeah. Tell us something about these uh, new emerging technologies like that, that you really like. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence, the machine learning. I know that you're totally into that stuff. So can you tell us more about um, how advanced you in that level, in, in that knowledge? Or? I'm not advanced at all in that knowledge. As you said, really? I'm a dinosaur. Okay, so go away. <laughs> Just come. come and uh, tell us what, what, what do you do in Amazon? How, how is your working day? I mean, people just don't really want to talk about all these new technologies. They want to talk about you and uh, they want to be like you because you are kind of a superhuman uh, working in Amazon and doing all this cool stuff. How did you achieve that? And what's your working day? Yeah. What, what do you do? <clears throat> well, I wake up in the morning, I put my um, Superman suit, you know, okay. and then I fly to one customer to another. Now, as, as a solution architect, your, um, your job is to give the proper advice to customers, how to migrate uh, workloads to AWS, how to use AWS services in the best possible way to fit their use case, uh, to tell them which is direction they, they should be thinking, uh, tell them about possible pitfalls and uh, successes, uh, what they should pay attention to, what not. Uh, and uh, so basically it's a, uh, it's a consulting. I, I should act as a trusted advisor to my customers and give them the best possible advice from the uh, cost perspective, from the performance uh, perspective, availability, so that they can be successful in AWS. Yeah. So tell us about who is migrating and, and what kind of software is kind of migrating because we are we see that uh, there is a lot of companies not doing anything just waiting for uh, nothing to happen mm -hmm. hoping that nothing will happen and uh, but at the end they will just die if, if they continue that way so who's migrating why are they forced to migrate yeah well companies that are just waiting i think they they'll be in trouble uh, if they continue to wait because everybody is moving to to cloud so if you look at the verticals, like from startups to uh, mid-sized companies, large enterprises, they are all moving to cloud in different pace, but they are going there. So sometimes all it takes is one of your competitors uh, from a certain industry to go to cloud and then you will start thinking, oh my God, they're already there and we haven't even started. Because the, the journey to the cloud is not overnight. It's a three years process. Okay, it took you like like how much? 100 years? How more, old are you? More, more. I, I still just scratching the surface. Yeah. <laughs> and and you <laughs> not even got into that machine learning and artificial oh, intelligence. That's on my to-do list for next 200 years. Oh, okay. So I'll get there, I'll get there. From your experience, uh, what's the biggest obstacle uh, for customers to migrate to the cloud? Uh, because uh, they have their data centers or they, they um, pay for services, for, for hosting services to somebody else. And what, what's the biggest obstacle, what's the biggest pain when they start migrating to the AWS? I think number one pain are uh, um, skilled resources. So um, technology is there, technology works, it's proven. Uh, AWS is ready for companies to move to AWS, but these companies from the organizational perspective are not ready. So when they decide, when they take all the fear and doubt and uncertainty out of the way about the cloud and decide really to go there, they face the big obstacle and that is who will do this for us. So my job is to educate customers, uh, to send them to certain trainings uh, so that they can get certified. And once they feel comfortable, uh, they can then engage with partners, uh, they can engage with our professional services to sort of kick start them and ramp them up quickly on AWS. But this is number one I, issue I see um, because once business from these companies see that uh, uh, you can actually deliver very fast, they keep sending requests very fast and you have to meet this demand and you need to have a big workforce that is skilled on AWS and that is a problem but to find AWS those still manages to help customers? I mean, uh, it is possible to ask for help and uh, get some yes. skilled guys from Amazon coming to your company, yes. talking to you. And uh, you, you did some workshops here. You actually went to companies and kind of made some <coughs> internal workshops. It's also on a friendly basis, but also on a comp it's, it's your mission. Well, yeah, it's, it's so that's, that's part of my job. So I am um, 
helping communities and customers uh, to spread awareness about AWS. And I think AWS is a unique company in that sense because <clears throat> what solution architects like myself are doing is a work for free to, uh, for all the customers out there to help them ramp up on AWS. And not only that, I can give you an example from like uh, two weeks ago, I was invited to a customer workshop. So the whole day workshop where the sole topic was how to save cost on AWS, how to reduce spending on AWS. So AWS is sending me uh, for free for the whole day on, on site to try to find a ways to spend less on AWS. In that sense, that's what we do at AWS. And this is, for me, I think, a uniqueness of AWS, and this is customer obsession, um, as, we, as we talk about. So we know you here in Serbia as a, as a Java guy, and what's the state of Java in the cloud? How do you feel now about that? Ah, uh, yes, I have to say I'm slowly migrating to Python as well. Ah, oh, <laughs> <God>. that. <laughs> Just go on. But I still okay. like Java, so okay. it's, I'm still Java guy. Uh, yeah, I think, um, um, well, the father of Java works for AWS, yeah, so James okay. Gosling works for AWS. Uh, there is a big uh, Java development inside AWS, so you know that um, uh, implementation uh, is uh, called Amazon Coretta. Yeah, Aaron Gupta is a lot of promoting that a lot. Yeah, so, so that, is, that is from uh, AWS, and it's, uh, uh, it's a free um, uh, implementation. So uh, I personally am using Coretta as well. Um, I think Java is, is good. Java is sort of a, a basis for um, many stuff that we're doing in, in AWS. And um, lots of, uh, I would say, cold start issues that we have, uh, that we saw with Lambda and Java together are slowly going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> I think it's a, it's a good place. Uh, Did you have time to try these things, new things like Quarkus and stuff like that? Like zero startup time in Java? No, no, no. You don't. Just now, Python guy. That that really means that Not you're now into. You're a Python guy and, and going into. I'm a millennial. I'm a forty-year-old oh. millennial, and yeah, I just I have yeah. orange uh, okay. shoes and you know, I'm cool now. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, orange shoes. <laughs> orange shoes. Orange shoes. Yes, yeah. and I develop in Python. I'm a okay. millennial without hair and with uh, some problem in my back. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it doesn't really matter which language you choose. It's it's totally the same. And uh, I see there's a lot of support uh, for for many languages, but in 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 develop in deployment there are some differences that people should uh, look into. And uh, uh, when you think about the, the knowledge you get, uh, for getting into AWS, uh, it's not, is it hard to get in or is it harder later when you get into deployment, when you get all these limits, things you have to think about. It's, uh, uh, they promise us uh, infrastructure and uh, so we don't have to think about that, but at the end we end up with, with a lot of small things that we have to know. So how do you feel about that? Is it easy or hard? Well, I mean, AWS is constantly growing, right? So now with 170 plus services, uh, reInvent is just around the corner where I guess another number of services will be uh, announced. Uh, it's not getting easier, right? It's, it's getting harder, but the thing is, uh, customers and users now have plenty of options to choose from. And like with any other framework outside, I mean, I look at AWS just as one huge library, one framework with thousands and thousands of APIs, right? It's never easy to learn a new framework. And then every framework has uh, his own peculiarities that you need to be aware of. So it's very easy to get in the beginning excited about it, and, uh, and that's the right way to, to start. Uh, but then as you start working on, on your special use case and then going into dev tests and later on to production, you need to be aware of what you're dealing with, right? So services have limits, that's widely known. Uh, services have uh, best practices how to be used. That's why we have white papers, we have blog posts about it. We have solution architects who can help you, except for machine learning, that's not me. But, <laughs> uh, but there are things that um, you should be uh, aware of and um, like any other framework out there, you can like parts of it, you don't need to like parts of it, but as long as you stick to best practices, I think you're on a good way to uh, 
there, there are some ways to do automatic tuning of stuff. Like uh, yeah, there's a, a nice example from uh, Alex Casalboni about uh, the uh, tuning the lambdas. So that, that's that's uh, that's a good way to uh, to f solve these limitations uh, that you have that you don't. I mean, to be aware of. To be so so people can, so so the software can adjust by itself. To what it actually needs and to lower the costs, uh, get to the right level of service, but it still needs uh, a lot of knowledge even to deploy that. So it, it's really yeah, I mean, Alex wrote a blog post about it. So uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, there is so much documentation out there, be it uh, our official documentation uh, uh, that describes the service or white paper or blog post. Um, just for, for any um, question or issue that you're uncertain about, uh, uh, just uh, browse that a bit and uh, there are really lots of stuff. So when can we see you again uh, in Belgrade or Novi Sad for a <laughs> workshop? I, I've heard that you, you, you go to Sarajevo and do a workshop there. And, uh, well, my, my main uh, customers are in Switzerland and Austria and that's my territory. But whenever I have time, um, I like to help the communities in, in this region. So I was in Zagreb, Mavisa, Belgrade, uh, going next month to uh, Sarajevo, okay. and then Banja Luka. Uh, there are AWS user groups that are being formed there. So um, yeah, invite me and I'll come. Okay, thank you, man. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes.